Kyle from uh, Just Hunt Club. I'm um, going to walk you through the story of my two bucks on the islands last year. I can't really shoot them right here. I had no shot through, through all those little saplings. hunt on the island was definitely something a little out of my normal realm from what I'm used to. It all started the spring before we went, so the spring of 23, Brett and Chris did some scouting on these islands for turkeys and found some deer. Went into it with the mindset of staying super mobile and kind of just figuring it out as we went. It was kind of new to all of us hunting islands and seeing how the winds would work, but um, me being so used to small block and ag country, a lot of my spots are permanent sets and not huge in the in the mobile hunting. So everything was kind of new to me going into it, but I was super excited. Made a game plan the night before. Started off with problems right off the bat. Uh, some boat issues, so we all loaded up on the one boat and uh, made our way to the islands. Didn't see much. Saw a couple deer further off, but didn't see a whole lot. Going into that first night, didn't see a whole lot either. Um, we actually went to a different island, but uh, that first night, uh, Brett had success. He was quartering hard, huh? Yeah, yeah, I didn't realize how hard he was quartering. Yeah. What a beauty. Oh my God, look how beautiful. I'm so lucky. <laughs> how amazing is that? Jake and I kind of were like, man, tomorrow we should just kind of, we felt like you could almost just spot and stalk on these islands. Um, the deer aren't super pressured. They're not super used to humans, so they're not very spooky. We're like, well, might as well just kind of wander around this whole island. Jake and I went our way, the other guys went their way, and we didn't make it far from where we split up with everyone, and it was super windy that day. And we got up to the top of this, I guess you'd call a little knob, and the bottom of this bowl there was, it was kind of swampy, which wasn't very common on any of those islands. For the most part, they're all high and dry, I and mean, that's why they're an island, but there was kind of a swampy area, and Jake actually pointed out, he goes, I think there's a buck on it. I can't really shoot him right here. There's a bunch of stuff. Oh,
believe that. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I had to move. I had no shot through through all those little saplings, and I snuck around and I a piece of bark caught, and he looked and he walked, and I. Where did he died like ten yards right there, dude? Right there. Right there. <laughs> That was, that was the coolest fun. hunt that I've ever done in my life. Unbelievable. <laughs> it was a super thrilling hunt to be able to sneak up on a buck that, uh, I mean, it wasn't a very big or old buck, but just a buck in general. Sneaking up on one that close in his bed, in his area, he felt safe and get it done. And it was very cool. It was one of those things that you can only dream or dream about where I'm at, sneaking up on deer like that. Um, I've tried it when I was younger and never worked, but I always liked that style of hunting. It's just not something you can really do around here. So that was a very exciting and awesome hunt to be able to sneak up, you know, on a, on a buck like that in his own area. And yeah, it was a eventful ride back on the boat. But we got back to camp, hung out with everyone. Um, I don't think we even hunted that night because of the storm. So we kind of made a game plan for the next for the next day. I still had a tag left. I kind of was, you know, first first deer that wasn't a fawn that gave me gave me a chance. I was going to take doe, buck, whatever whatever it be. So that night we were uh, we came up with a game plan on what to do the next morning, and um, Jake actually. Had, a, had tags, so he was gonna go hunting that morning, so we switched some guys around and uh, James was going with me. And you know, that was the beauty of being mobile like this and having the saddle systems because it didn't matter who was hunting with who, everybody was prepared, ready to go wherever we wanted to go. So um, James and I, we got all of our gear ready that night. And the next morning, got up bright and early, like we were every morning and uh, got out on the boat. And I think James and I got dropped off first because we wanted to get into the spot super early because based on the scouting that Chris and Brett were doing, when this one particular buck um, was hitting the scrape, it was like first light, like getting in there. So we knew he was close if he was going to come. And the islands aren't very big, a couple hundred acres. So we wanted to get in there super early. So we got dropped off first, um, put the mini climbing sticks up in the tree. I climbed up, hung, hung the EDP platforms and we got settled in.
that's how you try it. Yeah, I don't. It hit him somewhere hard because he ran with his head. No, it was right, it looked center mass perfect. I think the deer's dead, but that's at eight. It's in the scrape. My initial thought was I hit him in the neck and it wasn't a good shot and he took off hard and we didn't hear him go a ways and he took off super hard. So we, we knew he was hit, we knew he was hit hard and, but I still hit to the right, you know, about the same distance and just, Kind of went from the highs of highs, a couple other guys got deer and some does and bucks and I shot that buck, Brett shot that buck and we were just kind of all on these highs and then then that happened and I, my initial thought was I probably wasn't gonna recover this deer just based on the shot and kind of went into a real bad low and we reviewed the footage and it kind of looked like it hit right where I thought which didn't make it any better. Um, the only good thing we had going for us is we thought, you know, it looked like he got hit hard and he took off like he was hurt bad. So we hung up in the tree for a little longer, um, talked to a couple of the guys, and everyone kind of agreed, you know, get down, go get the arrow, if the arrow's still there, because I couldn't tell if I got a pass or not. And we got up there, found the arrow, and we found some blood right away. So we're like, well, that could be good. So James and I both made the decision, like, you can see a ways on these islands. There's not really much thick stuff. Um, and basically, you know, if the blood seems sparse, then we'll give them time. But if, you know, if it seems seems like it's a painted trail, then let's just, you know, take it real slow, have another arrow knock. So that's what we did. And as we got to that, the one game trail on the edge of the island there, he really started to open up and we knew it was good. So we walked it a little further. And then it got kind of right to the bank, and it was, I don't know, maybe a 10-foot bank down into the water, kind of a gradual bank. We got to the bank, and the blood just stopped, and we were searching and searching and searching. And I saw this thing out in the water about 30, 40 yards from us, and I thought it was just a rock, and I didn't really think anything of it. But as we couldn't find any blood, it just kind of hit on me like, is that that deer? And I pulled up my binos or range finder and I could tell it was the deer. And... <laughs> it's freaking out. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me, man. Looks like you're getting your lake swim after a while. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. So I decided, well, we'll get down into the skivvies and go retrieve this buck. So that's that's what I did. I dropped down my trousers and uh, walked on out there and drug him back in. And you know, he was exactly what I thought he was. Nice eight point. Um, just shot his velvet. Super, super pearly white antlers and super sharp. Just the guys came. We might have set the island. We got the deer out, got him back to camp, celebrated, had breakfast, scun him out, and uh, basically, I'm like, well, my trip's over. I'm tagged out on two bucks. Stayed an extra day and it paid off. But um, I wouldn't have got either of those bucks if it wasn't for staying mobile. A couple of us shot bucks on the ground with our bows. A couple of us shot them out of saddles. It's just, it was the name of the game for that. And that's the biggest thing I took away from from this hunt was how how valuable it is to stay mobile when you only have a handful of days to hunt, you only have so much information, and you only know the terrain so much. 